Welcome to Ramblings and Randomness. With Roth and Romelio. I'm Romelio. I'm Roth. And this episode we are fan casting again. Yay! Fan casting! Casting the MCU version of the Exiles. <gasps> no clue who they are? Go watch our Rapid Ramble and you will see we explain who they are and why we're casting them. Alternate universe versions of X Men. Oh. Shorthand. Yeah, very, 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 very short. We didn't have the rule, we didn't really think of age restrictions, age restrictions except for when we talk about it, there's the character of Sunfire said should be younger. Yes. That was basically the only real age restriction we had. And as the same with the last episode, um, they cannot have appeared in the MCU before. And this is going to be fun. I'm going to win again. Well, you, you didn't win again. We tied last no. time. To make it easier to where we can't have a tie this time, we are casting nine characters. Odd number. The initial... Exile's original team from the book, which was six members, two replacement members, the first two that replaced them, and then the character of the Time Broker, who was like their Al from Quantum Leap. He was the one who was sort of telling them what their missions were. So, because we want to build up this time to the bigger names on the team, we're going to start with the time broker and the replacement characters and then we will go through the original team. Sounds good. Paper, rock, scissors, he goes first. And it's one, two, three, shoot. shoot. Paper, rock, scissors, shoot. Every time! Choose paper one time! Man! Who goes Not if first? you're going to keep choosing scissors. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Alright, so I will go first first because we're doing time broker okay. and we know I have a to be fair we don't know who each other chose we do not we don't have anyone similar on the list except for I have a hunch and anyone who watched last episode probably has a couple hunches of characters that have not been picked yet that he once cast in the MCU but I don't know for sure so anyhow, Time Broker is, and we'll have a little image of all the people. So, Time Broker, a short little bald man. Jason Alexander. <laughs> That's who I chose to. <laughs> I didn't know we picked the same one on our first choice. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I was looking, I, I, I searched bald Hollywood actors and I was going through it and I'm like, there was a lot of them that were skinny different, but I wanted someone who had a little bit more heft and I was just like, oh hey, he looks just like that. He has a second choice. Paul Giamatti. <laughs> Paul Giamatti. Okay, he's my second choice. Jason Alexander actually was my first choice. Um, I think first... When I thought of Time Broker, and years ago we did a uh, Marvel RP, tabletop RP, with Time Broker, and the way it was described to me, whenever I would think of Time Broker, I would imagine Jason Alexander from Star Trek Voyager when he played the leader of the think tank, and the way he acted, that's how I would imagine the interaction with Time Broker, so he was like my first choice. And of course Paul Giamatti could play anything, because he's amazing. Stop hating on Paul Giamatti. Oh, so I guess we tied. Um, hey, Buddha, are you going to pick Jason Alexander or Paul Giamatti? Yeah, I'm going to go with Jason Alexander. 
Why do you hate Paul Giamatti? I don't hate Paul Giamatti. Just pick him and, like, it just, it doesn't work to me. Every single time you pick Paul Giamatti. To be fair, this like, is probably the closest. There's a lot better of a choice. Paul Giamatti is an amazing actor. Yes. And he would work well but with Tyler. He was the rhino. Things, but like, again, he was my second choice anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then physically, like with this character, just, he, yes, Jason Alexander looks a lot more like you would imagine a, a real life version of that guy would look like. I concur. That's why I chose him. Yeah. <laughs> more than Paul Giamatti. <laughs> All right. Next. All right. Sasquatch. Ooh, I'll leave this one. Who... Sasquatch in this is similar to the Hulk. It is a smart, brilliant scientist, human form, and then turns into a large, strong beast. And in the comics, she is a uh, black woman. And you can pick yours first, then, this time. My first choice for, or my only choice, actually, because I didn't look up anybody else, for her is Tracy Toms. That's her. Um, anybody who's seen Rent the movie, uh, she replaced the original actress from the original play as Joanne. Oh, her. Yes. I think she would kill it. I chose Issa Rae from The Hate You Give. Mm -hmm. Which one can play a smart scientist better from what you your quick views. <laughs> uh, you come to think of it, both the people we just chose and what we use as examples, they'll play the lawyer. <laughs> Neither one of the scientists. But I'm just, the, Tracy Thompson, like I've seen her, what else did we see her in? I don't remember what it was. I saw her in something else. But her voice, I'm just hoping they do a music episode and she gets to sing. Music like, episode? Like if they, if they made this into a, a series. On their uh, Disney channel? Yeah. Or the... Disney streaming. Issa Rae's a good choice though too, but I like I like Trace Towns better. I do like both choices yeah. either way. I think choice. we did good. We did. I can't believe we died chasing that <laughs> I can't. I'm in it. That's insane. <laughs> We're not gonna tie. Jason Alexander. Fudge. <laughs> it's really awesome. Like I think. Issa Rae fits like the look compared to like what the look in the comic is more, but it, they make both your decision. How could Issa Rae? Right. I'll bow you. Alright, so bing! Point for Rolf. Alright. Now we are on Sunfire. I have two choices for Sunfire. Okay. First, Lena Condor. So I picked her or Kelly Marie Tran from the new Star Wars, uh, Last Jedi, the uh, the one who ran on the little crusade or the side mission with Finn. Oh yeah. What's Those, her name? Kelly Marie Tran. Okay. Those were the two I picked. So I just picked a second one because I didn't want to be left out of having two choices. So my first choice was Michelle Celine Ong, or Ong, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, uh, the only thing I remember seeing her in is briefly, and when I was walking through the living room because I didn't watch the show, was uh, 13 Reasons Why. My wife watched it. Um, but she looks like literally the picture that I chose for her. I was like, oh. That looks like Sunfire. So uh, that's why I chose her. Now, because Rolf had to pick a second one, and I didn't, feel, I didn't want to be left out, I chose somebody a bit older, but um, she looks very young, and that's Brenda Song from uh, Disney Channel. Hmm. Are you okay, Buddha? Yeah. He's just like, I hate all of these characters that I don't know who they are <laughs> after Google. The only one I've seen, the Brenda Song. Yeah, it's Brenda Song, and 
Hey, and you saw the Last Jedi. Oh yeah, Last Jedi. So those are the only two I really have to judge like how they act off of. And the character seems a little bit more serious than what Brenda Song has ever done. You don't, you've never I seen her, her from oh. Disney movie, Disney stuff. That's all I know her from. You gotta expand your mind. <laughs> Just lost another one. Because of Buddha's inability to watch other stuff. I don't watch much. I just Googled and found people who I thought fit the part. <laughs> no, you watched The Social Network with me. She was in that. And she had a serious role. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So which one are you picking? Don't let him bully you. I'm not bullying. It's okay. If you want Roth to be 2-0-1, oh, since we tied the first one, it's fine. It's fine. I'll allow it. <laughs> of course you <laughs> I can't really say much, but if that's who you choose, that's who you choose. And it makes more sense, just because, like, the way she... The way she talks, like, I can't imagine the way she talks in social network and everything. The way she talks, I can't take it all that seriously. <laughs> yeah, because you could take a comic book serious. <laughs> I'm a, so you know what I mean? Who like, is choosing? She, she's not the comic relief of the movie, and we don't need multiple Who's comics. Who's choosing relief. Kelly Marie? Yeah, the comic yeah. relief falls in love with her, and then finds out she's a lesbian. Wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> so, um... Oh, oh, or oh, two and one. Ross two and oh and one. All right. I told him I was happy with my picks this week. I was happy with my two. Now we're going to the original team. We'll start with the one who was in the series for two whole issues before he <laughs> died. Magnus, who is the son of. An Magneto ultra version and Rogue. Magneto and Alternate Rogue. Alternate reality, remember. Um, mine, is, I picked somebody a bit older, um, because to me in the comic, Magnus always looked older. Like, I understand he's supposed to be young, but he looked older. So I went early 40s, um, and I chose Justin Hartley. Um, for those of you who don't know, think, oh. <laughs> think Arrow from Smallville. Wow. Or uh, Kevin from This Is Us. A fit dude can act very, very well, and I think he'd be able to pull it off. Plus, it's, I mean, it, it's going to die soon. Hi, I'm Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your choice? Adam Driver, Kylo Ren. Okay. Okay. With that long hair, he looks dead on him. No, he doesn't. Okay, he doesn't. Okay, so you chose Adam Driver because he has long hair. You think he looks like Mag Magnus? I, I think he could look like the descendant of Magneto. I think with his mama being rogue, Magnus would be pretty. That's why I chose Justin Hartley. I think he would, especially the way they present him in the comic. Like, he's always doing that three-fourths turn, head tilted. He always has a That's all the artist was really able to draw. What's it called? <laughs> What's it called in a... Uh, <laughs> the, the model movie, the comedy. Zoolander. Uh, blue Steel. <laughs> yeah, he's always doing Blue Steel, so... Uh, your choice, Buddha. Melvin's. Yay! Won't come back. <laughs> so we're... Uh, I'm one, I'm one, two, and one, and you're two, one, one. Yeah. I'm making a comeback. All right. All right, so next on our list is, I'll choose this one. We'll go with. Oh, I was just going to go. Nocturne. Okay. Nocturne is the alternate reality daughter of Nightcrawler and Scarlet Witch. I imagine if Nocturne. I gave Nocturne <clears throat> a regular human skin shade, what would she look like? And I came up with the talented and beautiful Zoe Kravitz. Um, Angel from X-Men First Class. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, down to the dreads. Uh, she looks way prettier there than she did in First Class. She does, that's a great picture of her. Yes. 
They did not do her justice in first They class. did not. And that's one thing I think is uh, TJ, that's Nocturne, they call it TJ, is beautiful. And uh, I, I wanted that to reflect, especially because she's blue. <laughs> like so. we, we both went with the uh, very beautiful because, like, I, my choice for Nocturne was uh, Naomi Scott, who is Jasmine in the current Aladdin remake. Ooh, nice choice. Um, I, funny enough, I was going to cast her as my Blink. Oh, yeah? I was going to cast Naomi Scott as my Blink, but I found somebody I liked a bit more. I, I first, when I was, I was casting Blink first, and when I was going through, she came up and the people I was looking at for Blink, but I was like, I didn't want her for Blink, but I was like, you're going to be Nocturne. Yeah, I, I was going to have her for Blink, but then I remember Blink, like, being very physical, and so I thought of Name of Scott in Power Rangers, because she played Kimberly in Power, the Power, Lady, blah, 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 Power Rangers remake movie, and then I thought of the person who I chose for Blink, and I was like, yeah, you don't compete, so <laughs> she got knocked out. But yeah, so it's down to Zoe Kravitz versus Naomi Scott. Buddha, who are you taking? Uh, Naomi, Naomi, Naomi Scott, I can't say that. Really? Was. Yeah. But she don't have the dreads. She doesn't have to have any. Yeah, she does. Nocturne is known for her dreads. Really? That Until was she just cut like it. in the first arc, or a couple arcs. She got rid of them pretty quick. Yeah. All right. All right, so. so ding! One, three, one, three, one, one. This isn't looking good for me, folks. Uh, Rolf gets two more. He win. One more. He wins. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta knock it out of the part with these last four. Next will be Thunderbird. Um, you wanna go first? Sure. Okay. Because you're going to have to look mine up. But I was going through, and Thunderbird is a Native American character, so I was looking through and. He's got to be someone big and tough, and then especially you're going to be, a lot of him is going to be CGI because of having been a, her or a horseman of Apocalypse. So I was just looking through someone who I thought fit that kind of profile, and I found a guy named Rick Mora. Hmm. That's who I think. He, to me, his jawline looks like Thunderbird's jawline to me. I don't know why that brought up. <laughs> my pick um, and I did a little throwback to the gifted I chose Blair Redford who plays Thunderbird in the gifted um, I think it would be a nice homage to the multiverse as you choose somebody who's already played the character but playing him from an alternate universe um, of course he could be CGI but him in the gifted Is that he yours? kills it yeah that's Blair Redford and so, uh, obviously, because Thunderbirds of Native American descent, we wanted to choose a Native American actor. Um, good jawline. Good that's jawline. The important. He, that's like really, especially for when he's like, the, the one thing you got for the character of Thun, uh, Thunderbird in the Exile specifically is like most of him is under suits, and so you just have that jaw, which a lot of times looks great too, but you want something really mm -hmm. prominent there. And so. I, him, him in this action sequence, like he pulls it off very well. Uh, in the gifted, so I, I was when I was thinking about Thunderbird, I was originally going to go with uh, Adam Beach, but I was like, eh, you no. Know, yet while it would be mostly CGI, I want somebody who has that physicality. And so Larry Redford, I was like, just keep him. He's great at it. Elements. Boo! Three, two, one. <laughs> to, to three. Wait, no. Two, three, one. To three, two, one. Yes. Coming back, guys. <laughs> All right. So, so we're going to do you like, so we're saving Blink for last because mm -hmm. she's the leader. Oh, we're saving maybe for second to last. Right. So we're going with my favorite character your now. Your favorite character. I forgot that he was your <clears throat> favorite, I guess. So Morph, who is the comedic Relief. jokester of the group. Oh. Shapeshifter. Very for me, very important to note is he's first off very physical in his humor, and he's similar to um, Voldemort in the fact that he doesn't have a nose, 
So you want someone who can have expressive eyes, and particularly for Morph, who has a very expressive mouth. I just realized who you chose. Who did I pick? I can't remember his name, but I, I know the face. What's he from? Uh, Sheldon Cooper. No. No? Oh, no. Okay. No, he has not got the physicality. Okay, who's yeah, I can see him. Do you want to show yours first or my mind? Okay, so it's your favorite character, I'll yeah. go first. Okay. Um, so when I was thinking of Morph, I was like, it has to be somebody funny, but who can act? Because while Morph is the comic relief, he is also, he loves his team. Like, that's one thing, over the series of the Exiles, Morph grows to be the heart of the team. Very um, true. And so I wanted somebody who could convey that. And I happened upon this person by accident while looking for somebody else. Neil Patrick Harris. Um, MPH at, just imagine Barney Sinton as not a pervert. That's Morph. Um, he can do the physical, very expressive, and he is hilarious. Love me some Neil Patrick Harris. So that's my Morph. My Morph? Andy Samberg. Ooh. Hold on. Especially I was watching some of the Lonely Island videos when you get to see him and how much like he contorts and does things with his jaw and his mouth. Brooklyn Nine-Nine like, is my favorite TV show right now. You guys right. Like, and he's the Richards. heart. <laughs> but That's funny. it's MPH. <laughs> Andy Samberg is a funny dude, but he's a comedian first. Neil Patrick Harris is an actor first. And if you've ever watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine, in situations where it gets serious, Jay, well, Andy Sandberg always seems to, there's always a punchline there. And that's not more. When that's more. No, when more for serious, more for serious. Mm. You remember the fight with uh, Proteus? The no. jokes went out the window. That was like the one fight where they really went but out the window. That's my point. Andy Sandberg can't throw the jokes out the window because that is, at its core, who he is. Anyway, so it's Neil Patrick Harris versus Andy Sandberg. And plus, I think NPH holds the look better. I feel bad because it's your favorite character, but NPH. Boom! Oh, stole it, but that's okay because I'm about to lose my favorite character. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so now to my absolute all-time favorite comic book character because of this book. It's the only thing he's been in besides when the book crossed over with something else. But this is th this version this of the version character of him, yeah. has it? only been in this or when Exiles crossed over with X Men. He was yeah. never in any yeah. other. Which title. goes to show you how much I like this character, um, and that's Mimic. So Mimic has that more traditional blonde-haired, blue-eyed hero look. And he's literally the hero of his universe. He's yes. the leader of the X-Men. Uh, didn't he join the Avengers too? Yes. Uh, he was he was the Captain America of his universe. He was all that in a bag of chips. Um, so for him, it it had to come down <laughs> to somebody that I thought fit the look. He doesn't want to say it. <laughs> and you know what it is. That and Boo, you know who it is. Derek Thieler! <laughs> you, why you gotta look it up? It's the same dude from last time. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, Buddha. I, I, I like to look at them side by side. If I can't, wait. It's okay. Um, Derek Thieler, to me, is he has that all American pretty boy look. He can act, he's physical. I think he's like 6'5, 260, lean muscle. So, I mean, he looks like a superhero. And. I think given the chance that he could portray one very well. So if he doesn't get this one, respect to him and Paul Giamatti to be back. Paul Giamatti, definitely. Who's your choice, Rolf? So, my choice for Mimic is a little bit older because I've viewed him as he's been a leader on the teams a little more grizzled. grizzled. I went with Jensen Ackles. No. Like, now look, I love Jensen Ackles. Supernatural is my jam. Okay? If I didn't name my kid in Ryan Pack, I should have named Sam and Dean. But Jensen Ackles is going to play any comic book hero. Were you, 
with the and with the and. San and the Sam and Dean. <laughs> yeah. If Jensen Ackles is going to play any kind of hero, there's only one in Marvel that he can play, and I'll be that's great. That's Wolverine. Anything else is definitely DC. He's a DC guy. Him, imagine him as the the. Yes, I saw him dressed up as the Red Hood, and that was pretty badass. Yes, or imagine him as the grizzled, battle-worn Batman for the new Batwoman palette, like Jensen Ackles. That's my choice. Um, for if I was going to catch it tonight, so I like him as Mimic, especially because he can. At the beginning, he can become looking prettier up, and the Mimic in Exiles. Goes through the ringer. Oh, you didn't gotta tell me. He's my favorite character. I know. Okay, he gets a he gets a, a alien bug in his belly. I understand that. I think, I think, Ackles could pull it off really well. Um, Derek Thieler. <laughs> Buddha. Back to Derek. Thieler. Not that he couldn't pull it off, but I think Derek Thieler is a better dick. Three, three, one, we're tied on skillet. And guess what? There's only one left. Wait, no, there's two left. Wait, no. You're ahead now. I'm ahead now. I'm ahead, guys. I did it. One more. Come on. Come on, Mel. All right, so now we're to the leader of the team, Lady Blink. Um, the one of my favorite characters Ma in, in, Marvel. in Marvel now. I, I think I have two or three issues left to grab from Age of Apocalypse and then I'll own every book that she has appeared in. She's my favorite teleporter. I've owned everything Mimic's appeared in because I have all of Exiles. Yeah. Uh, so, it's down to Mimic. Or not Mimic, down to Blink. Uh, you want to go first or you want me to go first? You go first because we know we're going to have to look mine up. Okay. So, my choice for uh, Blink I wanted to choose someone who is a warrior, somebody who could fight, obviously, because Blink can fight. I mean, Age of Apocalypse, if you ain't read it or know anything about it, it's the deal. Um, so she has to know how to fight, and she's beautiful, like all comic book characters, really. So I wanted to choose somebody who had that beauty and that physicality and the martial arts ability. So I went with Sophia Batella. Um, nobody knows who that is. She played Jayla from Star Trek Beyond, or um, if you've seen Kingsman, the Golden Circle. No, not the Golden Circle, the first one. Um, she played the chick with the amputated legs. I can't remember her name. She was the alien with the white skin and black, black markings. Markings yes. in Beyond. In Beyond. Um, if you haven't seen that, I mean, she's very, she's awesome. She's awesome sauce. Um, so yeah, that was my choice. Um, let's see if I could pull up anything else she might have been in that people don't recognize. Her. Oh, the last Mummy movie. She played the Mummy. Um, she was in Atomic Blonde. Um, she's quite the actress. I went with more of an unknown. She's really only been in some random TV shows here and there. Uh, current one she's in is called Strike Back. She's in something called Romper Stomper. But uh, I was looking her up. She looks good. I watched videos of her doing kickboxing and working out and uh, Muay Thai training. Muay Thai. Mo Muay Thai training. And I picked Anne Truong? Trong. Tr Trong. And I uh, doubt I'll be able to get permission for the video, so I'll have a link in the description to just so you can go to her YouTube page and see her doing some workouts so you can see what she looks like. And that's who uh, she's, again, all comic characters. She's very beautiful. And yeah.
demo video, I did. He's seen Star Trek Beyond. No, he hasn't. Well, go watch it. <laughs> oh. I've seen enough of to know she, who she played in it. Like, I didn't watch the whole movie. She does kick ass in it. It is one of those, so I don't, like, I'm not arguing the physicality. Um, so, um, I'm not going to show a demo reel because I'm confident that if Buddha looked it up, he would. It would unfairly rule against Rolf because Sophia Batella is a boss and a drunk. She's dope, but I think my blink would be better. And this is for the marbles. We either tie or I win. And I have an idea. If we tie, we get an emergency casting. You got your choice, Buddha. You might just win. Drum roll. You pick an Anna Trong. Yeah. It's a tie. Oh man, I thought you had it, Batella. <laughs> All right, Buddha. All right. So since we tied four, four, one. Is it someone else from the Exile Universe? Like Mr. Creed? <laughs> the yeah, Age of Apocalypse Sabretooth? Yes. Mr. Creed. Mr. Creed's what's called. So it's picking a saber tooth. All right. So we stop the camera to try and think through a little bit longer who we think should play the Age of Apocalypse slash Exiles version of Sabretooth known from Blink as Mr. Creed. Uh, I have come up with my choices. I have two of them. I have half of a one. I'm, I'm kind of debating. I'm he has back half a one. I'm not going with, but you know, especially I was half tempted. <laughs> <laughs> half tempted to go with Leo DiCaprio. Think of him in The Revenant, man. Ooh! Ooh! What? I got my two. I'm ready. I got three now. You have three now? I got three now. Okay. Oh, cheater. <laughs> Do you want to pick a third or? Third? Leonardo DiCaprio is my third choice. My third choice. Bro, yeah, let's just give Buddha three choices each. He gets yes. one out of there. My third choice, The Rock. <laughs> Saber, that version of Sabretooth is not that charismatic. That's fine. Okay. My second choice, Brad Pitt. Just then. My second choice. <laughs> Again, I think we're pulling from Troy here. Eric Bana. What's wrong with Eric Bana? Hulk? Yeah, we don't count that. That doesn't exist. My one choice. Who... Hasn't been in the MCU. Tom Hardy. My choice, again, pulling back from the previous ones, Ben Affleck. Oh, God. He won't do it, one. Why not? He's done with comic movies, man. Whoops. You don't think Tom Hardy is? Venom is terrible. Is Venom made a billion dollars. I don't Venom care, is, I don't not care if Venom made a billion dollars. Venom was terrible. And they're making more because it made a lot of money. Yeah, but we're not talking about money because so did Batman vs. Superman made a shit ton of money, but it was still a shit movie. Yeah, but they made a sequel to that and it tanked, so they stopped making it. Well, Justice League didn't tank. Yeah, it did. No, it didn't. It made 600, 700 million. It, it made tank. It made 900 million. No, it didn't. Did it? No. No, it made less than Batman vs. Superman, and Batman vs. Superman didn't crack a billion. Tom Hardy is not done playing comic books. So you really think he's going to come do... Come be a part of the MCU? The actual technical MCU? Yeah. <laughs> MCU money. That's where it's at. So... Our second fan casting. We chose an odd number, still tied. 
So we had to have a tiebreaker. I got it this time. Roth wins with casting Tom Hardy as Mr. Creed. The Age of Apocalypse Exile version of Sabretooth. Yes. Our video for next week will be a answer any questions you have or if you have any specific topics. Uh, it depends on how many, if we get a lot or something that will take a while because there's one on there that is already going to be a bit, a deep, could be a long video. We might break it up or do have it be a couple little things where we do it, but we're going to be answering questions or comments on our thoughts on different things. So if you have any, put them uh, in the comments. Let us know. Um, again, if you have anything, excuse me, across Nerdum that you've ever wondered, um, why Spider-Man's webbing organic suddenly? Why did he have web shooters? Um, what's the extent of Cyclops' powers? Anything like that. Or why did this story not make any sense? And we'll do our best to answer it or find an answer for you. Um, and if it's something that both of us have zero interest in, we will tell you we have zero interest. We'll say. We might look it up just to be like, here's the answer. We can't comment on it because it's trash and we don't watch it. We know Exiles is rather niche. Uh, it had a new title recently, but it did not last. So. The original run lasted for a while, 100 issues. Uh, the one person, though, that has been the main popular character that has kept the books coming back time and time again has been the character of Clarice Ferguson, or Blink. She became a fan favorite during uh, the alternate version of Age of Apocalypse. She's pretty dope. And, yeah. Oh, hold on. I, I didn't explain to people why she's my favorite teleporter, and I said I would. Oh. She's my favorite teleporter because um, they were fighting Hyperion, Superman, once, and they couldn't touch him, and they couldn't figure out how to beat him. And he did something that pissed her off pretty bad. And he said, what are you going to do, teleport me? He's like, I'll fly right back. She said no, and she took her daggers, her, her conduit, which she used her teleport stage paper, and threw it away from him into a sand dune and teleported the entire sand dune into his body. It was the most brutal shit I've ever seen in a comic book that was like mainstream. I was like, oh my God. Like, it, it, it's amazing. But that's why she's my favorite show board, I promise we go see it. Okay. Um, this is uh, how popular the character remains. This is the new action figure, Marvel Legend, that just came out this last month. And this is her appearance from when she first appeared back in the 90s, so it's the look that people enjoy of her, and it's a pretty nice figure. Romelio, what do you think? It is pretty dope. Couldn't you just, like, done this? Where's the fun in that? So, <laughs> oh man, if you all knew what happened behind the scenes, <laughs> we have got to have a blooper reel one time. See, I kind of want to, because it's sort of one of those things where I want to like go like that off screen and then on screen uh, be editing, handing you something. Look, why don't you go back to college? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're getting too deep. Uh, it's called YouTube. Oh, yeah, that tells right, you how to do right, that. Right. So, remember, I, I YouTubed. Dragon Ball Aura in Adobe, and it told me how to do it step by step, so I did it. Portal in Adobe. Yeah. And then, I mean, if you want to do that, that's cool. I just don't want, like, so much work for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it probably won't make work cut. Tomorrow. Yeah, I don't work tomorrow. It's cool. Uh, Raw. Here. How about we do this? What? Like. Subscribe. Subscribe. That's the thing. Share. Comment. Suggest yes, all right. those things that we've asked you in the past. Um, I'm Mel Romelio. I'm Roth. Roth. 
And we'll see you next week. (laughs) (laughs) Just end it. It's okay. Cue the music. (laughs) You don't have have to do anything every time. I think you'll agree. Ooh, it is nice. I like that dress. I'm going to get one for my wife. Bye! Bye! That's so cheesy. So <laughs> cheesy. What's wrong? That's... Was that good? Are you satisfied? Uh, it was yeah. a lot better. Yeah, it was better, so. It was better, and if he has to, he can always split the screen right there and, and, and sync it up a little bit better. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> I want to find out.